Hello YouTube family, this is Ravi and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm back with day 6 video of UI Builder series and today we are gonna see how the button which we create in the last video of day 5, how we are gonna work on this button. If I click on this button, something should happen. What should happen? We'll see it today class. If you are very new to this channel, do share and subscribe and don't forget to like, subscribe and give lot of hearts in the comment section if you really like the content and don't forget to watch the previous video because this video linked on this video perfect so let's get started so in the last video we see what button can do actually we have to see what button can do but how to get a button this is what it is in the last UI builder part we have built a button over here oh it's not over there Okay, it was some somewhere down here. Somewhere down here. You can see. So the button is over here in this screen. And when I click on this button, something should happen. You will see on the left navigator something is showing up. Why it is showing? Because I have to remove this. And then I can go ahead and refresh this page. So let me save it first. And it will auto refresh. No, then we can refresh it. Okay. So, very simple. When I click on this button, something should happen. So, for that, we need to build a model. Like, for example, alert box, confirm box, we used to see in our service now client script, if you remember. Here also, we have a client state parameters. We'll talk about it in the later classes. But my point here is we have to create something on the button. So, when I click on this button, style is fine see on the event side on the event when button is clicked i need to open or close a dialog when i click on this see when to trigger option is coming up just a second yeah when to trigger always and what you gonna trigger so you have to choose the model accordingly so we have to build our model how to build the model so you have to do one thing we have this model option on the left hand side on all the UI builders workspace part so we can click on model see what I want I want alert confirm destroy custom iframe viewport model so we'll talk about it in details of iframe in the upcoming classes and now what I can do with the model is very basic so we'll go with the model option and what we're gonna do is we can use alert or confirm or anything is fine. So there are multiple types of model available. If interviewer asks you, you can tell about alert, confirm. Most comments are alert and confirm and destroy. And let's let let me just select anything custom which I am gonna create it. Okay. So click on custom. And once I click on custom, see one, two, three option is showing up. What I want to display there. We have to add a content. Same like where we used to write here, right click and add a content here. Add after. Similarly, we can click on this and I can type here list, this type uh, stylized text. The same which we did for many of us. Stylize. S T Y. See here, the stylized text is coming up. Let's make it little small. Let's cancel it. Yeah. So now this stylized text is showing up over here. Let's workflow. You can see it is written over here. You have to configure it. Okay. So now what my requirement is. When I click on that button, I need to see some text. Hey, welcome to service now. The button is now clicked. It's something like this. So let me save it first. Okay, let's, let's close this. Now, just click on the button again. Go to the event and let's click on add handler. So, what you are going to handle here, open and close. This we did in the last class, we remember. I explained them. open and close. So, what you are going to open? I going to open the model which I have created custom one. Make sense? Click on add. So, now when you click on this button, Something should happen. Let's save and check as of now. Let's check whether something is happening or not. Refresh the page. 
sees less workflow it. So now the model is configured against the pattern. Simple. But when it point is it is just static. It's not dynamic. So we have to make it dynamic, guys. Right now I have made it static. So how to make it dynamic? We have to configure in the model, sorry, button pop-up model category. What is that? So if I go back here, just by defining a client state parameters. What is client state parameters? Inside this client state parameters, if you notice, you have to create a parameters that you can call on the button. Again, understand. It is a page component or a page variable. So it can fetch the value from there and you can create your own parameter and call it example. Let's say Let's say record details. Okay. And I am gonna define this as a string. Or you can define as any of the number, boolean, json, your your thing. You can provide the initial value here. You can leave it blank. It will count as empty. Anything is fine. So once you are done with this, close it. Yeah, now it's fine. So now client state parameter is auto de it's already defined by all of us. Means me, you, when you do it together with me. Now what we are gonna do is my requirement is when I click on this button. The state parameter, whatever we have added here, I'll call that on that model page. When I say model page, this is a model. Okay. So what I'm going to do is scroll down. This button is called something need to be done here. Okay. So let's go there. Click on button. Event is added here already. Now we are going to go to lookup record, which we have already created in the first or I think third class. Here we have short description caller ID. And now when I click on this button, I need the incident record details. So particular incident record details I need, not theme for everything. So I need a sys ID of it. Or you can say any correlation ID if you have. So what you can add it, you can add here. This ID is there. This ID. Okay. So once this ID is added, now the result will fetch. Caller, number, short description and this ID. You can put category also if you wish to add more data inside it. Category. Okay. Now this is done. Category is also showing up. Perfect. Now I am going to use this client state parameter to call the this ID or the category or the number. So what I am going to do is I'll click on this. Here I can I can use this initial value to set it. Okay, just a second. I think I didn't save it. Let's say model on the serial record. This ID. Yeah. Again, click on this record this ID showing up. Perfect. Again, click on this just to cross validate. That time it didn't save. Make sense, guys? We can provide your details in the comment section. I have seen there are a few comments which I will answer it because the, that comments are related to the further clutter. If I might be late in replying, doesn't mean that I will not reply. Go and check. I have replied to each and every comments on the previous classes. We'll go to the button. This is already defined open and close button and in advance we have not added anything when to trigger always. That it? Now we are going to add a handler and here I can search update T. First is going to open that model which I have defined and I'm again going to add a handler on the button one to update the client script parameters whatever I have used it. I'll click on this. Click on continue. Now we need a client script parameter name and the value. So what is my client script parameter name? This is the one. 
Record Society, which I have created. And what is the value? Click on this. And from where the value should come? Value should come from this one. This card, this card should remember our crucial component. Under that, there are repeaters. If you don't remember, just a quick recap. Crucial component, under crucial, you have repeaters, which is added here. So, what I'm going to do is, under this button, when you go to event, button, event, when you add a handler and type just your client state parameter, when you open that, which parameter records this ID and what is the trigger criteria? Trigger criteria is your repeater and what repeater? Value. Correct. So, what you can choose is value and I want a sysid double click. So, whenever you click that, you will get the sysid of that report or caller of that report. Your wish. Whatever you wanted to call. So, click on add. Save. When I'm clicking on this button, it is showing undefined and that's okay, no problem. I'll come back to it. I'll configure it, don't worry. But I want when I click on this button, some society or something should appear. As of now, what I can do is, I can create a stylized text. So, let me do that. Add before. Uh -huh, not like this, Control Z. So, I'm gonna choose right click, add after, STY stylized text. Okay, so cancel it. Let's push it. Sorry, let's push it somewhere here. Yeah, so when I click on this button, I need the society of that. So where the society is configured on the client state parameter. So let's go to the let's remove this or just click on this record society apply. So as the starting, this is empty. Why it is empty? The reason being is. By the time when you click on this button, then only the record society will be appearing. Else it, it would it won't appear. One case. Second case is you can up you can use right now I am using society. You can use anything else of your choice. Okay, let's try it. Click on save and refresh the page. It's undefined. Wow. Nice. Button. Update clients to parameters values society display value apply. So I think display value was missing, guys. So that's the reason. Let's test it now. Come back. Okay, let's go back, refresh the page. And I think it should work. So uh, when the button is clicked, update client state parameter will be called. And display value apply. So it is applied now. Apply. Save. And then refresh the page. I hope it should work. And there you go. Society is showing. This is 4.6. What about this? Yeah, different different society is showing. Can you see here, guys? So now when I click on this button, button something is happening. Correct. So now we are we are doing great. Actually, we are doing great, guys. So what we can do is instead of sys ID on the button here or the model ID which we have created header. Here we have configured what sys ID. So instead of that, I can go to data resource. I can go to lookup record. I want caller display value. Apply. In the second, I need again a stylized text. And here I need um what I need. I need event. Sorry, configure. Let's just close this. Open this. Click on this. Here I need data resource. Look up record result. Um, short description display value. Apply. Okay, and I need a state here. So again, stylized text. S T Y L I stylized text. 
and now cancel it close it open it back click on this click on this data resource because data resource is the place where we have configured our lookup record result do we have a state here aha uh -huh. we don't have a state so what i can do is i can add a state as of now close this so instead of that guys i can create a new data resource so let's say i can use data resource for lookup record record or lookup record anything is fine click on the next add option in this lookup record i am going to add our incident table exactly like same way guys so here table name you can choose incident okay and once you are done with this you can add a return field so i need same thing number okay caller add date perfect so these things okay so i will you okay let me rename it guys so i can rename it to new lookup record new look up, new lookup record you can add a filter whatever you wanted to add you can add it close this now so this is the new one and this is something which we have created old one if you remember the trigger type incident short description everything was coming up but if you have noticed i don't know whether you noticed or not this was showing result 3 only three records but the new one which i created lookup records okay sorry new lookup record it's showing 201 What do you think? Why it is? Remember, because here we have not add any condition. See, in the last example, there was a condition added. What was the condition added? So the condition was priority is critical, category sovereign, state is in progress. Correct? Exactly. You can add the logic here in the next one. So what I can do is, or in the same record. i can add a state instead of writing two times your wish so i i have showed you both the way you can create a new or you can use the existing one state in the same record i am adding it simple now make it big everything good close it done now let's go back to your button model button this one i have to configure click on this data resources look up record i will choose because here i have added state and now let's choose the state apply oh no 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 state and display value of state okay perfect apply all good guys save it go back refresh the page and there you go when you click on the button thing should happen enjoy employ i and the short description is this and the state is in progress can you see the button how it works and it is representing the sys id of that record so this is how you can configure will make it beautify in the upcoming classes little bit more so now whenever we click on this button something should happen that's what is working so i can delete this text as of now we don't require guys or we can delete this easily we don't need actually guys if you ask me so that's all for today and when i click on the button in the next video the state should update some something we can do on that so that's all for today we'll meet in the next class till then thanks everyone and have a nice day